шановні колеги. Колеги, Welcome to Ukraine Crisis Media Center and Ukraine Crisis Media Center of Reforms. This is the place where we are discussing all the reforms in detail, especially such where uh, there are uh, many discussions about the reforms going on, where there are many viewpoints, and now we have a very good chance to discuss the reform of the public health care because for quite a long time and this is the issue which has been discussed uh, and uh, in s specifically that is the issue of uh, what will Ukrainians get from health care institutions autonomy. Today we can discuss how to settle that issue. Now I would like to invite. Now the Committee on Public Health is uh, uh, dealing with that and I would like to invite uh, Olga Bogomolets to take the floor. Thank you, dear friends, esteemed colleagues. I would like to thank our co-organizers. Today, the Committee on Public Health and myself personally, we have become the initiators of this roundtable because uh, there's quite a politicized the situation now. We need to understand what it is. We need to openly talk about what is the problem about so that the society doesn't have any misunderstanding. The position of the committee uh, since uh, January is uh, as follows. In January, we had the hearings in the committee and we suggested step-by-step plan and strategy of reforms for the next two years from the point where we were a year ago to the point uh, uh, to, to two or three years after till the moment when insurance medicine is introduced. We need to uh, make 25 important steps. We developed a strategy which was uh, given to the minister, one of the steps was uh, to make uh, health care institutions uh, autonomous. Also, it was about redistribution of the powers of the Ministry of Public Health, everything needed so that uh, the public health in Ukraine uh, corresponds to international standards. It is very symbolic that it is today that the, the whole uh, civilized world is celebrating the International Doctors Day. Today is the International Doctors Day and um, uh, uh, Ukrainian doctors have to go far uh, till the uh, work of the doctor is recognized both morally and financially. Mr. Shimke is joining us. And I do hope that uh, in five, ten years, Ukrainian doctors will be working, receiving, uh, will be working according to European clinical standards, will be receiving European salaries and Ukrainian patients will get European level of uh, medical assistance. Uh, so back to 25 steps uh, uh, which we uh, proposed to the minister. And we received uh, some comments to that and the strategy was submitted to the minister and we expected to see very active work. Unfortunately, uh, during the whole calendar year, not a single law that would correspond to this strategy wasn't sub was submitted by the Ministry of Public Health to the committee. Only one draft was submitted about making uh, health care institutions uh, autonomous. And uh, this is the 
uh, law, the draft that we'll be uh, discussing today. The Committee on Public Health is for making the institutions autonomous, but without the risk of making them privatized, because the risk of the bankruptcy of the state system cannot be allowed. So we are ready to support the uh, uh, this, uh, um, uh, we are ready to develop the reform, and this week uh, we will consider the issue of parliamentary hearings uh, in order to create a joint step-by-step -step map uh, so that uh, irrespective of the change of ministers, uh, people feel themselves uh, protected so that they understand that their life and health are in the responsible hands of those who will professionally be executing their tasks and duties. I would like to introduce the moderator, probably had to do that in the beginning, but I will take up the powers of the moderator, and I will introduce our guest, the head of the National uh, Council of Reforms, Mr. Dmitro Shimkiv, Deputy Head, uh, Deputy uh, Minister of Health, uh, Mr. Musi, Mr. Garbuz, the representative of Anti-Corruption Committee, Oksana Karczynska. Vice, Pre 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 Vice President of the Academy of uh, Sciences, uh, head of the Organization Patients of Ukraine, Metro Sherimbi, the representative of uh, Reanimation Package of Reforms, uh, and the representative of the Trade the Union of Medical Sector, Yulia Cherkashina and Marina Slobodnichenka, the representatives of the law firms uh, which will be making analysis of the laws uh, which are not supported by the committee and the analysis and presentation of the new draft as to making autonomous uh, the healthcare institutions. And it will um, allow to preserve the social infrastructure for the future when these uh, premises and the territories will not be needed for medical purposes, but they could be used in order to have on the territory of the hospitals uh, to create hospices or orphanages for sick children uh, and um, palliative uh, and rehabilitation centers. That is our main uh, objective, to provide the conceptual understanding that we need to look not just at small steps, but we need to see the problem that we have in the state at a large scale. And we need to think about social protection of all people who feel unprotected. Now, Dmitry Shimkiv. Thank you. First of all, I'm happy to welcome you all, to greet you all the, in reforms of any country. We know how many discussions are going on around this issue of reforming the public health care. Some have successful, some countries have successful reforms, others not successful. Now I would like to switch to a discussion or to start uh, uh, to initiate the foundation, to put foundation for today's discussion. We need to understand that the objective of today's roundtable or discussion is this search of a solution which the state requires. We need to talk about the reform today. From the time of the discussion, uh, we see some personal challenges. Um, 
we're talking about reforms uh, and we need to uh, step away from some personal accusations. Today we need to talk about the reform of the public health sector of Ukraine. Where we are today, uh, today there are two draft laws which are at the parliament, two packages of draft laws, because the package submitted by the cabinet of ministers has three laws, 23 point three three drafts and there are alternative draft laws two two laws today there are many discussions going on on making healthcare institutions autonomous a lot has been written, a lot has been discussed. The Ministry of Public Health, many times after the document was submitted to the Verkhovna Rada, heard the criticism uh, from different members of the committee as to removing some of the aspects uh, of the law. And that was publicly recognized, but based on the technical process, this could be done between the first and second reading uh, via the um, introducing amendments to the draft. There are some additional comments expressed by other stakeholders. I just would like us all to understand the whole context. It's important to understand where we are. Two drafts are in the Verkhovna Rada, and they need to start, uh, something needs to be done. There is a procedure which is to take place. It is important today to understand the following steps, which could be made. I know that the Ministry of Public Health is absolutely open for discussions. I am grateful that the committee is open for discussions. And uh, I welcome. What I liked is that the committee is for making institutions autonomous and that there will be parliamentary hearings. This is a great instrument of looking for compromise. Now, Viktor Shafransky, the Deputy Minister of Public Health. Good mo uh, afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. And I would like to emphasize that today's event is a very positive event because it demonstrates the willingness of all stakeholders uh, and the reform of public health should take place because this is really important. The Ministry of Public Health Care is interested in having the expert discussion we are for constructive and wise compromise. We are for looking for the model which will allow us in working groups to finalize it and to submit the uh, approved document to the parliament and to start the reform of the health care system. We have no time left, basically. So again, using this opportunity, I would like to express our willingness to move forward. It's great that we're here to discuss all these things so that we start reforms in the system of public health care. Thank you, Victor. Before I give the floor to uh, our lawyers for presentations, uh, as to the risks uh, which are in the package of uh, drafts submitted by the cabinet of ministers. Well, first of all, I would like to thank Victor for the first uh, uh, 
meeting of the um, chief specialists of the Ministry of Public Health, and I hope that the reform will start not just from the law, uh, which uh, does not give anything to the patients of Ukraine, but the reform will start from uh, approved clinical European protocols, from uh, approving the guaranteed by the state basic package of medical services for which the state will guarantee payment because if there's no understanding of how much money will be paid for what then there's no sense in making institutions autonomous this may become quite dangerous and my personal question is why has not the Ministry of Public Health uh, made no important steps, but only one step on making institutions autonomous? Now I would like to give the floor to Marina Cherkashina, Yulia Cherkashina, the partner of Law Firm uh, Paritet, which will present the analysis uh, on the laws of the Cabinet of Ministers. Good. Uh, afternoon we are presenting the legal risks which we found when we were analyzing both packages which are at the parliament now first of all we would like to mention analyzing both packages we found out that the final objective is the same because in the end both packages provide for uh, giving to the healthcare institution some autonomy in managerial decisions making. But the difference is that the subjects of uh, legislative initiatives see different approaches to achieving this objective. And these uh, different approaches have the risks uh, if the drafts are approved in the version uh, which is registered in the parliament. Uh, mm -hmm. Before analyzing the risks, I would like to mention that, in fact, the World Bank expressed the official position as to these uh, legislative initiatives. And it is very important that the position and comments of the World Bank emphasize how important the objective is to make uh, healthcare institutions autonomous because the official letter of the Office of the World Bank, which was addressed to the Cabinet of Ministers, the Presidential Administration, the Committee of Verkhovna Rada, says, uh, that uh, making the institutions uh, autonomous uh, is the first important step in reforming the system of uh, health care and uh, emphasizing the importance of this objective we will understand where we can get and how we can achieve the compromise the first risk is uh, Risks. In the screen you see two In fact, in these norms you will not see the word privatization or the sale of communal uh, health care. But from the legal point of view, that uh, gives an opportunity to get to privatization. And now we will look at it. You know that the існують у формі бюджетних установ. Згідно з урядовим законопроектом, передбачається Basically, the budget uh, institution, state and communal, can become state and communal, commercial or non-commercial enterprises. After that. There's nothing criminal in that, because changing the legal status, we change the format of management. Later, after 
the budget institutions become state-owned or commercial, then they have the right to get corporatized and become joint stock companies or LTDs. The budgetary institutions now has a statutory capital with the shares which are owned by the state and or by territorial community, but these shares may become, according to the legislation, the subject of buying and sale. sale. Through these double transformations, we will get the uh, object which will could be sold later. The second risk is the risk of bankruptcy of state-owned or communal enterprises. As of today, any budgetary institution, not just in the sphere of public health, are not subject to bankruptcy because there's nothing to take away from them. As soon as they turn into state-owned uh, commercial uh, companies, uh, into joint stock companies, uh, into LTDs, they automatically become this subject to bankruptcy. According to the law on bankruptcy, they could be made bankrupt if such company owes uh, money to some suppliers. And basically, the property of such company can be seized because such company is responsible with its property. So the property may be sold to private investors who are interested in that. The, um, sale of property uh, is happening uh, according to legislation and uh, there are no limitations. Please do not interrupt. They will not be uh, state-owned any longer. Let us uh, continue discussion after all the presentations. I will provide comments so that you have no questions not answered. Actually, uh, you can make the company bankrupt. Uh, the mechanism, uh, the arrears could be created artificially. The property will be sold through the auction. And uh, also you can buy the property via different uh, judicial procedure. The same could be done with budgetary institutions. That is the difference. The budgetary institutions have nothing. They own nothing. As soon as they become state-owned or communal uh, commercial enterprise, they receive some property. This is very uh, small detail. You do not see it uh, from the surface. Uh, we are not saying that that was done on purpose, but both draft laws, the governmental and alternative, are very progressive. But you can always uh, get into a legal trap. That is why we are discussing it, not to criticize one of the drafts, but to avoid the risks, uh, we are at the stage of launch. Uh, as far as I know, and while I try to follow uh, the uh, public statements by, by ministers, deputy ministers, that is what I uh, have heard the ministry promises to um, uh, uh, exclude from the uh, 
um, legislation. Would you please describe it in more detail? Because all these things could not be excluded from the text after first reading. Uh, and uh, now, uh, in relation to the uh, possible bankruptcy, we go to the next document, alternative go uh, document, which in late 1990s allowed um, to privatize many state enterprises and create a lot of clans of oligarchs that is our intention is to prevent privatization of the health care complexes which were uh, built uh, uh, dozens of years ago on the public money. Also, uh, we did not go in much detail into the specific uh, provisions like uh, liberation from audit at the stage of privatization plus uh, opening of uh, um, commercial accounts in private banks uh, those who wish to um, get a full picture of the um, um, minor uh, commercial details hidden in that draft laws uh, the uh, you can ask us and we will provide uh, more detailed uh, analysis. And uh, 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 I would say a couple of words about those risks about accounts and commercial banks uh, and uh, uh, that is, was revealed not just by our team, but also by the legal department uh, of the ministry of the cabinet of ministers, which also pointed out to this risk uh, that uh, um, uh, those uh, healthcare institutions, uh, which will be based on mixed. Uh, uh, right of ownership, they ha will have additional uh, risks in uh, uh, unstable banking sector in Ukraine, or where commercial banks are subject to many risks. Uh, Marina, would you please uh, mention what the healthcare committee suggests uh, to ensure implementation of reform, uh, reforming uh, and uh, uh, autonomization of the healthcare institution, but with uh, simultaneous prevention of the privatization risk. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, I will add a couple of words. Um, about uh, what is uh, suggested by the alternative draft law. This is uh, not just uh, al alternative draft law. This is advanced alternative law, uh, draft law. This slide shows the structure of the organizational structure suggested by the um, governmental draft law and uh, uh, alternative uh, draft law suggested by the group of MPs. So the uh, state unitary enterprises are suggested to be turned into the um, treasury enterprises, then uh, communal unitary enterprises into communal non-commercial enterprises, etc. I won't mention once again the risks of uh, uh, privatization, but here you see these risks mentioned once again. The major aspect which I would like to underscore, and this was specifically mentioned by the World Bank, uh, this is the object of funding. 
the object of funding is the medical service provided to population and this should be clearly traced back in the um, uh, all in all optional draft laws and the money allocated for health care they should be allocated for health care services we should again finance not the beds in hospitals, but services delivered by uh, healthcare institutions. Both uh, draft laws uh, uh, do not allow um, opening of accounts in the state banks and uh, say nothing about the accounts in state treasury. That's why we have removed uh, this shortcoming and uh, mm, uh, allowed opening of current accounts in uh, the state banks. Uh, also, we have uh, provided a possibility to um, exercise uh, autonomization uh, that is to to involve the funds of third parties uh, state healthcare enterprises can make a voluntary decision about autonomization and reorganization into the um, state treasury uh, healthcare enterprise in the cabinet draft law all the healthcare institutions which are under the auspice of special um, uh, institutions and special uh, um, ministries, enterprises, they were deprived from this right. While we uh, suggest to give this uh, right to um, changing the um, structure, to change the um, status to all healthcare institutions. Thus, today we in, uh, put a foundation for proper delivery of healthcare services and for proper implementation of healthcare reform. This will allow also in that number uh, the healthcare institutions to provide uh, paid services to people. Uh, also, uh, during transition period, we do not uh, um, allow to extend um, the state procurement uh, system uh, on the um, uh, requests for uh, health care services. One of the main objectives uh, is uh, to distinguish between uh, the uh, um, owners uh, uh, of the operational management and uh, 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 and ownership, and there will be, the major emphasis is made on operational management. Oh, okay, what uh, prevents you from amending the um, registered draft law um, uh, between the first and the second reading in the parliament? The obstacles really exist. In line with the parliamentary regulations, we should introduce amendments to the articles which already exist in the draft law. All the suggested amendments, they amend, not just amend the existing articles, they uh, suggest new items in these articles uh, and uh, they use uh, some new approaches. And I believe that it is incorrect to pass uh, the law in first reading, which is risky for the society. We should start this reform in right way. No. I, I'm giving the mic to Mr. Yuri Garbos. Uh, I would like to respond now. 
my vote which I planned to give for the um, state draft law and uh, uh, at the very beginning uh, I asked the same question as you to the um, initiators, to the drafters of this law. And uh, uh, then we asked the um, legal department in the in Verkhovna Rada whether it will be possible to eliminate those risks which you mentioned and to introduce proper amendments between the first and the second reading. Uh, that's why, and thus we reveal this won't be possible. And uh, uh, the governmental package was uh, based on the uh, mm, uh, uh, privatization, actually, of the shareholding of uh, one of the um, mm, shares of state enterprises. That's why our lawyers have chosen one uh, draft law, which was the easiest for um, uh, amending. And that's why we have chosen the law, which was the easiest for um, amending uh, and uh, the cabinet draft law was uh, mm, uh, less uh, uh, feasible for for um, amending. And I'm very grateful to Mr. Shimkev for participation. And I would like him to understand that uh, we have chosen the MPs project for up upgrading and uh, for improving um, because it was much easier than to amend the cabinet law. The all, oh, the only uh, drafter and uh, lawmaker, uh, uh, Mr. Moussi, author of the alternative draft law, expressed full readiness to um, amend his draft law, to repeal it, to, to, and uh, to cooperate. Uh, Mr. Garbo's anti-corruption committee over home Narada. I would like to support uh, uh, what has been uh, quite correctly said. I would like to thank our experts and lawyers for what they have uh, presented. But there are some issues. First thing I would like to mention is we need to recognize that uh, make it, it's a, a reform and uh, people it's not just the doctors and the patients who are concerned but also the students who want to work tomorrow who want to understand how the country will develop tomorrow i believe that today uh, uh, both drafts are not ready to be discussed and uh, uh, taken to the Verkhovna Rada, but I believe that after the draft is considered by the committee, then it will get to us and then our experts will give a deep analysis. Uh, but I would like to address all of you. Uh, this uh, scale is very, uh, the, the, the scale is uh, big from a village hospital to a hospital in Kiev. And the interest is different. And we would like to understand how will the surgeon work where, uh, in the hospital where the population is just uh, uh, 7,000, uh, how 
what will we do with the maternity houses? Uh, will the distance to the maternity house be like 50 or 70 kilometers away? I would like to talk about that. There is one other piece of information in the U.S. In the U.S., uh, during the year, and they commit about 100,000 uh, mistakes, the doctors. Uh, in England, 70,000. Uh, in Germany, 90,000. Uh, we do not know whether we have the uh, mistake of the doctor, what is the responsibility of the doctor. If we do reform the healthcare system, then the quality of service uh, should go up. But the safety and responsibility, the doctor should be responsible for the mistakes. Why I talk about that? We need to understand, we need to develop such a roadmap. We need to uh, uh, find the way when we can support but uh, I believe that uh, both drafts are very not are not mature I would like to request our colleagues uh, to talk on the topic because today the committee on public health has uh, developed the a uh, road map of how to move forward. Today, the Committee on Public Health uh, considered these laws, uh, all the risks were analyzed, all the opportunities of how to move forward in the committee. Uh, the MPs recognized, uh, uh, approved uh, to uh, send uh, the uh, draft of um, Oleg Musi for working additionally on it, and the author agreed to take that law to work more on the law so that there is a clear understanding of how we will move forward. And now the floor is given to Oleg Musi. Good afternoon, dear journalists, dear colleagues. Um, in fact, uh, Making uh, the um, system autonomous is what we need. And to say that one of the authors of alternative or governmental draft uh, is uh, trying to do something else would be wrong. I support, I confirm my position that I am for uh, making the uh, healthcare institutions autonomous. So I believe that. Uh, these drafts uh, are just the first step to further reform. The reform, after it has been uh, developed, uh, it should be, then you know, there was a strategy which was presented by the ministry, but in fact, uh, uh, we, uh, it has not become the document. But, uh, we believe that there should be a step-by-step -step action plan when in times of late Yushchenko in the beginning uh, when Knezevich was uh, the minister then Mitnik uh, came up with the proposals to the president and step-by-step -step action plan of reform was approved. Then it could have been called the reform. Today, we don't see such a document. And that is why the reform will start, and this will be a systemic reform, and we need just the systemic reform, not just filling in the gaps. Uh, it's uh, like a legal document uh, based on which we could consider different pieces of legislation. But the first step, making institutions autonomous, is needed. That is recognized by everyone. 
so basically uh, the um, analyzing um, Uh, the draft law analyzing all the rifts, uh, we have not been uh, mistaken um, that uh, we uh, would have to introduce this uh, draft uh, in order to save the situation, to make impossible the risks of uh, stealing from the Ministry of Public Health, the risks which are in the governmental drafts. Uh, uh, so we now have this uh, governmental and alternative draft and it's all moved to political uh, space. Uh, uh, what should be done, how to come out of this situation? The strategy uh, is um, uh, very uh, clear. We are talking about tactics. What should we do? Uh, if we want to make institutions autonomous this year, what should we do? The Committee on Public Health, and I agreed with that, and I even suggested that as the author. The Committee understands uh, that the Minister or anyone from the government, uh, if they agree to some uh, changes, uh, uh, this is uh, beyond the competences uh, of the executive uh, authorities. They, draft law is in the legislative authorities and now the legislator uh, will decide on whether to accept or not accept the risks uh, with which uh, even the minister and the deputy ministers agreed that yes the ministry uh, accepts all the remarks expressed by the public by, by everyone so what should be done in order to minimize the risks so that we don't have the risks. Just imagine the situation that in the voting for amendments, the MPs do not accept the amendments and what then? Then we delay and at the initiative of any MP, the approval or the, we, we, we witnessed how there were good intentions. They were saying we will uh, make in amendments and then they were not voting for these amendments in the Verkhovna Rada. So uh, this is very normal, uh, what was suggested by myself and the committee, that the uh, draft law of the uh, members of parliament will be uh, submitted for finalization. Our opinion is that as of today, unfortunately, unfortunately, despite the fact that the ministry declares that they agree to removing the risks, but we have not seen the draft of the ministry with the risks uh, removed, but now we see that there is an alternative draft uh, developed by the MPs, uh, which next day after voting in the parliament, and the parliament acts according to the procedure. We cannot violate any procedures. If the committee has introduced these drafts to the agenda, I cannot call it back it has to be uh, reviewed by the parliament. And I believe that the five MPs who agreed to become the co-authors of the draft, which will be finalized, if you have no objections, we have such a procedure as the collective of authors, the minister, the deputy ministers, anyone can become co-author of this draft which has no risks uh, that uh, about which we've heard. So next day, what should be the, uh, how should the events uh, uh, develop? If we don't want just to talk about who loves who, we need to send the alternative draft uh, 
for finalization and we five MPs, maybe more MPs, next day we will submit the finalized uh, draft uh, and in a week the committee will consider it and then we can vote for it without any risks in the Verkhovna Rada. This should be the tactics of how to consider the drafts from the committee. Thank you. I would like to remind you again that the Committee on Public Health works professionally. We, uh, it's not politicized. Uh, there was such a pressure on us. We were accused in uh, uh, delaying the reforms. Uh, uh, we were uh, I, I'm not talking about all these accusations. Our biggest task uh, is um, uh, the small group of MPs uh, managed uh, not to allow privatization. That means that there are some changes in the state. There are people who are ready to fight uh, and there are mechanisms on how you can uh, uh, develop um, and uh, how you can uh, fight with the corruptionists. Um, so now I would like to give the floor and to say that the Committee on Public Health looks at this reform as a comprehensive reform. We were looking at it um, um, in such a way, without clinical protocols, without responsibility, without understanding of who pays to who, this uh, process of making institutions autonomous uh, will be worth nothing. I will not be able to stay here till the end of our round table, but I would like to request the, to tell to the representatives of the ministry that there are 120 laws in the committee. Please look at this list and decide which are priorities for the Ministry of Public Health so that we can consider them as a priority so that we can submit them for the consideration by the parliament and also prepare by the ministry the proposals and expectations uh, what you're waiting from us what else should be done and i would like to request you to insist uh, that the reform should be implemented uh, on uh, family medicine we need to create the level which will be taking care of uh, people and the law on uh, uh, emergency medicine because 30 percent of people die because the ambulances ambulances do not reach them now i would like to give the floor give the floor to dmitro Shipko. good afternoon dear colleagues Esteemed colleagues, uh, esteemed uh, uh, Madam Bagamolitz, all those who are present here today, and the round table is very serious. We understand how important the problem is. The administration of the president, the Ministry of Public Health, the Academy of Medical Sciences experts are present here, mass media. And uh, Madam Bagamolitz was right, saying that in order to implement reform, we need consolidation. What is reform of the medicine in my understanding? What is needed for that? First, we need the political will. We need to uh, understand the reform. The prime minister, the president, the ministry, and the committee are talking about the reform. Then we need the financial resource. Without the financial resource, we will be unable to do anything. And third, we need laws, uh, basic laws, to reform the system of public health. Not just one law not on making autonomous. 120 drafts are in the committee. I address the ministry and the presidential administration 
there are some basic drafts as new version of law on medical uh, medicines. Uh, do we need this law for reform? Yes, we cannot reform the medicine without reforming the pharmaceutical market. There's alternative law, uh, draft law of uh, Musi, and uh, we are ready to work on it with the ministry. And uh, since February, it's uh, down there, and we can do it all together. The next uh, important draft is on the status and activity of the institutions of public uh, health care which clarifies what is medical service, what is medical assistance, what is uh, uh, classification of medical institutions. Um, uh, the law, the draft, uh, has incorporated 35% of what was uh, developed by the previous uh, government and 65% of some new things. So this draft on the status of the institutions of public health has uh, Article 15, which talks about making medical institutions autonomous. Let's look at the initiatives, not uh, uh, as uh, specific initiatives, but uh, so that we clearly describe the operation of medical institutions irrespective of the form of ownership. And the third draft, which is read as registered in the committee, on social medical insurance. That was registered on the 30th of July this year. I believe these are the basic laws, pharmaceutical, uh, work of uh, medical institutions and uh, the uh, social medical insurance. That's what we are talking about all the time. So I call upon all the colleagues, experts, please join us. And we are ready to consider every term of every draft. We need to look at the reform in uh, all together as a comprehensive system. I'm ready to provide all the information to the representatives of mass media, to all, because we are all interested in high quality result, which people will feel. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to the uh, head of the National Reforms Council, uh, to Mr. Dmitro Shimkev. Uh, by the way, I requested for a special sitting of the National Reforms Council. Uh, would you please mention when, when this could be done? Mm -hmm. Thank you. In the healthcare reform, in education, in armed forces, all citizens of Ukraine are experts. I am also ready to participate in uh, this uh, discussion, but I am not an expert. I try to uh, keep in mind all the points of view which were expressed today. I am very happy to hear this criticism. I am not representing the ministry today and uh, I'm uh, uh, happy that the ministry can hear all this criticism and uh, uh, take it into account. Into account. Uh, of course, we cannot repeal the cabinet uh, draft law. It's a more complicated thing, but what I would like to request from MPs, uh, if the draft law uh, goes to um, amending and uh, uh, to redrafting, I would uh, suggest that you have joint meeting with the cabinet uh, and uh, um, 
negotiate with them which provisions from the ministry you are able to include to the advanced uh, um, uh, more elaborated draft law I uh, as of now I can see that there is a readiness to find a trade-off uh, um, as uh, for the uh, possible scenarios for further actions uh, uh, or whether to vote for the existing draft law submitted by the cabinet or to redraft the um, draft law from members of parliament. Uh, um, I think we should keep in mind what best could be done for the um, advancing of the reform, for forwarding this reform. As for the uh, Automization of the um, uh, healthcare institutions. We have already uh, gave you the answer that special uh, national reforms council uh, meeting could be devoted to this issue in November. Because prior to this, we have to uh, to make decision on the anti-corruption uh, part of reforms on the. Um, Venice Commission's uh, uh, recommendations to the Constitution, then the uh, educational system, and uh, then oh, you will have this time slot for mm, mm, discussion of the health care reform. Uh, there were some decisions made at the National Reforms Council um, about health care reform. Uh, some of them were implemented, but we now uh, understand clearly that uh, um, the most efficient uh, uh, the reforms in sectors could be discussed when the entire National Reforms Council meeting is devoted to some specific issue. That's why. Uh, in uh, November, we will listen the minister, then the Verhovna Radas committee, a point of views, uh, uh, and uh, c compare these two visions expressed by two branches, and uh, then uh, come to some decision. That is, in November, December, uh, we will uh, be able to discuss the Healthcare reform at the National Reform Council. Uh, the alternative draft law was uh, uh, given by me to the ministry by the end of this week in order to invite the ministry to joint work on the uh, new draft law. The uh, cabinet, uh, the the uh, uh, Health Care Committee, uh, the, the Ministry unfortunately uh, blames the Health Care uh, Committee in corruption. We tolerate these uh, statements and uh, uh, because we believe that uh, the corrupt uh, um, forces try to co uh, to spoil the image and reputation of those honest members of parliament who are ready to implement the reform. We are ready to, uh, to carry out this reform and to initiate uh, for the punishment of the corruptioners. Uh, mm, mm. Dear colleagues, I would like to emphasize uh, that our round table is extremely positive and to point out to the positive message of all the speakers today, we should have primarily concern in the quality of medical services for ordinary people and uh, um, when the ordinary regular citizens uh, uh, say that they feel this improvement in medical services, then we will be able to say that 
our reform is successful. Now we should think how to move forward. We should start speaking about uh, um, national uh, medical insurance. Uh, we should uh, speak about uh, uh, comprehensive access to medical services, independently whether people live in big cities and towns or uh, anywhere in remote rural areas. We should speak about the list of medical services which should be free and which should be paid. There should be a specific list of free medical services to be provided to people irrespectively of the um, you know, status of ownership of each medical enterprise after the reform. Thank you, Victor. I would like to give the floor to... I would like to express gratitude uh, for the discussion having such a format. And I would like to share the experience. All those present were in this situation and found the contractive way out. A month was spent for that. When seven laws turned into one, the parliament voted for, the president signed, but unfortunately the Ministry of uh, Public Health has not uh, done anything with bylaws and international procurements do not take place in Ukraine, but there were several rules for everyone. Taboo, to move the communication from the mass media to table. It is important for us, for presidents, it is a request from us. If it, there is a good law, remove all the ambitions. We patients need it. We need it in October so that it's voted for because the life depends on that, not the comfort. And we are happy that today there's no criticism, there's no assessment of any side. We are sure there are some comments. There are two or three contradictions which could be resolved within a week. We will support the autonomous system of operation of the hospital. This is very important law for us, for us, the patients. Thank you, Dimitro. We invite you together with the committee uh, we have the nearest meeting on Wednesday. There will be the report of the Ministry of Public Health on uh, international tenders uh, and procurements. That is very important uh, issue for us. We have the impression that these mechanisms are being delayed and there will be uh, not enough uh, procurements made uh, this way. Now the floor is given to Karczynska. Esteemed colleagues, esteemed friends, we have been discussing, we are uh, quoting in Ukraine Mr. Lukashenko now. What was the success of uh, Belarus's system of public health about? Mr. Lukashenko said that all uh, the civil servants will be treated in their country. Now we discussed. Maybe we need to introduce it into the law on uh, civil service, uh, that all the civil servants, uh, the members of parliament, the presidential administration, the cabinet of ministers, all the civil servants who serve the country, they uh, give their uh, commitment that they and their families will be treated only in Ukraine with the exception of those cases when the uh, disease cannot be treated uh, in Ukraine. If we manage to achieve that, then our reform wouldn't be just quick and high quality, it would be super quick and super high quality. The only time when everyone is interested in implementing the reform is when every civil servant knows 
that the health of his family or her family depend on the system of public health of Ukraine because um, I believe that would be the best consensus of promoting our reform in public health. Thank you, Oksana. Now, Volodymyr from Batkivshina faction. Uh, uh, very briefly, five things. First, do we need reform of uh, public health? The position of uh, Batkivshina faction is reform of the public uh, health sector is uh, very urgent. Uh, uh, this reform should be the priority for the whole country. It's great that the ministry and the MPs are trying to do something about that. What is the main uh, essence of these uh, uh, draft laws? The main thing is to turn uh, state-owned and communal public health uh, institutions into the institutions which are uh, commercial. Their main assistance is to making more autonomous uh, the public health uh, institutions. Uh, and this means that the accounts of the uh, institutions are to be open in the banks, not uh, taken out of the treasury. To liquidate the supervision uh, uh, by the treasury, the, com the uh, enterprises, institutions uh, have to independently decide on how to spend the money. Uh, the, all these amendments could lead to some negative uh, consequences. The, institutions, if they are turned into com companies, they will independently decide on, for example, increasing the salaries uh, at the expense of uh, taking money from uh, the patients. The, I can continue. The proposal of uh, Bitkivshin Affection is to uh, create the working group uh, Different experts are to be included into that, and we need to, uh, they need to consider five uh, options uh, of the reform. The first one is what we consider today. The second option is uh, to introduce in Ukraine the reform, which we tried to start in 1987, uh, which provided for financing of uh, the primary medical assistance. Thank you. Could you please submit all that in the written form? We will consider it at the committee. Today we have the round table which is dedicated to this very important problem. Mr. Yepchenko, one minute. And Mr. Zagorodny, one minute. Uh, Just some statements on behalf of RPR we uh, absolutely are not interested in knowing who, who will be the author of the reform. We need, we wish to see that reform is started. And my question to Madam Oksana, you have a question about the structure and uh, we uh, we discussed uh, this uh, with Mr. Zaychuk, who was the head of the of our, uh, secretariat, and uh, he invited uh, the lawyers, and uh, uh, the lawyers very clearly informed us that uh, the uh, actually this was uh, opinion of the regulations committee this was a discussion with the lawyers from the regulations committee i would like to explain uh, we, uh, we uh, 
we will, and while we wish to prevent the privatization of the healthcare institutions, we wish to see autonomization without privatization. The uh, uh, GNEL provided its opinion saying that uh, privatization is not a risk and when the uh, VR Committee on Regulations opposes that amendments should be introduced between second and uh, first and second reason, okay, let us uh, adopt the law uh, drafted by Moussi. Okay, but in this case, whether there is any risk that the reform uh, may not start in Ukraine. In January, we uh, passed this uh, action plan, uh, this strategic plan for the reform. This happened in January this year. We provided this plan to the ministry. Now we are in a situation when we should uh, wait all the arguments many times and to prevent a situation when the corrupt schemes are built up into the legislation. Now uh, the floor goes to Maxim Ionov. Thank you for this opportunity to participate in the round table. I would like to remind you the words said by Mr. Shimke at the beginning of this event. Uh, the positions of the uh, stake of all stakeholders uh, during the last uh, three months, uh, we clearly observed the positions of the Ministry of Healthcare, the position of the Parliamentary Committee, and uh, we now know the position of all uh, Legmusi like Member of Parliament position of the minister Kvitashvili. Uh, we also should take into consideration uh, best suggestions from experts and uh, uh, NGOs. In any case, all the parties, all the stakeholders should be aware and should contribute to the development of the reform. And development of the reform should be based on the principles of transparency, publicity, and since we want to, to develop these things, uh, but uh, uh, and work hard, uh, thank you, but uh, we have only one week to um, amend the draft law and to submit it to the Parliamentary Committee. Uh, you also received the draft law one month ago, and now you have one week more to provide us with your uh, corrected version. Mm -hmm. A month ago, the draft law was not ready. And uh, moreover, two weeks ago, um, Mr. Moussi uh, mentioned on Hramatsky TV that they had been working on this draft law two weeks ago. Are we discussing the final version? He is ready to accept your suggestions. I understand that there might be different points of view. And what is important that the drafters are ready to, he to listen to the suggestions and to hear them. And the reanimation package of reforms, they are ready to express their vision, and other NGOs are ready to express their vision. And the ministry, I know their position, they are ready to participate in amending the draft law. You have one minute. 
I am expert on uh, funding of uh, health care uh, spheres. I had been working in uh, Kazakhstan, in Kyrgyzstan. A USA had invited me to Ukraine, and currently I work as a consultant or advisor on health care issues. I am Ninel Kaderava. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, constructive approach, uh, and I'm happy that uh, uh, so many um, issues uh, are now uh, removed from the draft law. My question, so you are now reforming the state health care institutions and uh, and do you wish to reform them based on the operative management? Uh, but I would like to point out that in Kyrgyzstan, this became a huge obstacle, where in 2002, they were very much frightened with a, a potential privatization, and they, they have passed similar uh, law. And now, when there is a 2015, uh, they cannot change uh, this uh, uh, law and the new uh, economic reality emerged and uh, a lot of investments now are required especially P PPP investments and uh, um, in this case it uh, does not work it was in Kazakhstan uh, when they decided to turn state health care institutions in, uh, into um, uh, organizations which are based on the uh, new uh, economic uh, approaches and uh, so uh, they they have now less problems with the PPPs, and uh, I would like to point out uh, that it is useful to compare experience in both these countries. They now have uh, uh, the um, VAT. Um, uh, special privileges on VAT uh, and uh, other uh, economic advances which could be used uh, at later stages and uh, I advise you to look at the experience at both this country. Thank you very much for your intervention. I believe that your advice and your presence and work in the uh, parliamentary committee will allow us to work more constructively and to uh, build up some uh, useful schemes for the future. No input to the mic. Well, I listen to my young colleagues and I want to say that all these risks are exaggerated. What I mean, you're saying that this uh, change will lead to privatization, but uh, according to the law on privatization, the um, healthcare institutions can be privatized, but there is a norm of the constitution which uh, prohibits that. Then uh, you say that uh, if everything, if all these institutions turn into LTDs, uh, but according to our uh, code, uh, these uh, companies can be turned into, these enterprises can be turned into LTDs. So now today, you can go along this way. And also about bankruptcy, the draft, the law from 2001, that's on moratorium of forced uh, sale of property, which created inequality between the state-owned and private enterprises. So when you're talking about all these awful things, it would be good if you see uh, some other things in the legislation. So I wish you to continue reform. 
but don't exaggerate. From your permission, I will provide comments, because today we have the request from many uh, chief doctors who, before the law is passed, unfortunately could feel the pressure. And uh, they feel pressure uh, so that the property of the institutions are privatized. So our task is to minimize the risks. Those who do not see the risks, uh, it is uh, more important, you know, like with the oncology, if there is a risk and you can uh, really uh, do that, you can make these institutions bankrupt, then it's worth uh, removing the risks. Uh, because the responsibility today is the head of the Committee on Public Health. I am personally responsible for that. I am responsible with my name, with my surname, with the death of all those guys who died in my hands at Maidan. And I am ready to fight for each risk, to remove each risk. This is my position. I will bet a blow on uh, cold water, then I am explaining to people why we have missed this or that problem. And also because oligarchs are looking for where to invest money, some doctors are ready to become owners of such institutions. So in accordance with the situation that we have in the country, I believe that we need to be very careful and because this does not affect uh, uh, the possibility to uh, making institutions uh, autonomous in reality, we will be moving along that way so that we do not lose the assets, the property that our parents were working for. Uh, Mr. Zagorodny, I would like to address Dmitro and you, Olga. Several times uh, we, uh, I was saying when there was the National Council, uh, uh, when there was the Committee on Reforms, there was a proposal to create the sector. I know uh, that uh, uh, Madame Bogomolitz is the only one there uh, the, we need to create the platform for constructive discussions around uh, all these issues. Second, I want to say that uh, the decision made uh, at the uh, Committee of the Parliament is very constructive. The draft law is to be worked on additionally. Also, I believe uh, it could be the first step today to, we need, uh, the, the ministry has enough uh, uh, possibilities to make uh, uh, medical institutions autonomous. And uh, I will not take a lot of time. I would like to mention one more thing. I was an expert of the USAID, and I can tell you, in order to get the result, you need the package of uh, legislation. What we are discussing today will be the first step. I talked to the MPs after several meetings of the committee. And I said these two draft laws, and Mr. Moussi said that he's ready to finalize it, but they will bring more problems than we have, because the law is for the heads of medical institutions, not for the ministry, not for the MPs. They need to understand why, what for, what is the responsibility, and what is the responsibility of the local authorities. 
we need to remember that that is the competence of uh, different uh, authorities in the regions. I will try to provide comments. I will have to leave now because at five the uh, meeting of the National Council of Reforms will start as to where the discussion is going on. According to legislation, the policy of the public health in the country, uh, the Ministry of Public Health is responsible for the policy of public health. On the basis of the ministry, we created the team of reforms. Uh, you can look up uh, who are the members uh, at the website. Uh, there are representatives of the public, uh, MPs, uh, the experts. That's the platform. What we can do in the National Council of Reforms, uh, in the presidential administration, uh, the expectation that we will create a professional team there is just an illusion. Uh, we need to just stimulate the discussion because the discussion should go on in the ministry, in the place where the policy is being formed. Uh, the legislative policy is developed in the parliament and the cooperation between the ministry and uh, the legislator is the basis of creating the country. We need to understand that, that the Ministry of Public Health is the place where this should be discussed. Thank you. Uh, they have enough uh, problems, uh, and it's not because they do not want or they are not professional, but physically they will not be able to do what is needed. That is why we have uh, this team of reforms, which includes not just the specialists from the ministry, but the representatives of the parliament, experts, reanimation package of reforms. And we have the project manager that coordinates from the National Council of Reforms this work with the team. Because that is where the coordination takes place. We have limited personnel in the uh, presidential administration. We cannot hear, unfortunately. Thank you, Volodymyr. I would like to request uh, Mr. Shafransky from the Ministry of Public Health, Academy of Medical Sciences, Academician Kundiev, the floor is yours. Dear members of Parliament and dear colleagues, in the Academy of Medical Sciences, we share the approach which is taken by the Parliamentary Committee about the analysis of risks. And uh, I, should, I think we should focus on this risks analysis of risks uh, should be comprehensive and in order to uh, carry out this comprehensive analysis we should uh, involve not just only a lawyers to the analysis uh, but other experts because lawyers analyze purely um, legal aspects and while we should involve the experts on systemic analysis and uh, we have experts in the academy of sciences of ukraine um, in the, uh, the institute uh, uh, in glushkovo institute uh, etc and uh, also we have experts who dealt with, uh, who worked for the Systemic Analysis Institute in uh, uh, Vienna. And uh, I believe that we should carry out the systemic analysis, which will clearly suggest uh, the 
result of the future reform with all the risks enlisted in uh, uh, one list. The, um, also, the Academy of Medical Sciences earlier expressed uh, uh, their criticism about draft laws um, due to the lack of that systemic approach. Today we observe that there is a positive change and the systemic approach is obvious and that's why we are ready to, uh, to, in, to get involved and to support you. I think that without systemic approach, reform uh, won't be successful. And that is uh, what I uh, always uh, say, that reforming process uh, m might be successful with full involvement, engagement of all the uh, stakeholders like doctors, nurses, uh, uh, patients, uh, lawyers, uh, economists. Uh, this is a comprehensive reform which requires a lot of effort from all the uh, parties uh, and it won't be possible with the uh, exclusion of some stakeholders. That's why we uh, expect for the academic support from you. I have the mic already. I have a question. I'm Stanislav Dubko, uh, PPP uh, Development Platform Association, and I would like to draw attention of all the participants uh, to the issue of uh, risks and threats of privatization. Uh, and we wish to prevent the risk of hin of uh, hidden privatization, but I would like to point out to the existent experience uh, in those countries where very uh, cautious approach to the reform resulted in very um, uh, insufficient results. Uh, the, today I heard something which actually diminishes the, the scale of the reform. Of course, we should prevent privatization. Privatization uh, should be excluded. Uh, unfortunately, today we were supposed to um, discuss the reform and what people will get in result would get in result of the reform while we have had devoted our discussion to drew to two draft laws now my question is what people will receive after this reform what it will bring to people and uh, what uh, benefits does this autonomization uh, give to people besides uh, that possibility that the third parties will, will be able to contribute to the medical institutions from the third uh, from the very beginning we mentioned that it is the first step towards reform autonomization means that uh, healthcare institutions will get some specific um, autonomous rights when they are turned from purely state uh, enterprises, purely state institutions into independent uh, um, commercial uh, enterprises. And further steps uh, uh, will be directed towards uh, creating the list of medical services, list of free medical services, list of paid medical services. There will be the next steps following the autonomization of enterprise. So basically making institutions autonom autonomous will mean that uh, 
the inefficient uh, institutions, uh, when we finance the bed but do not finance the patient. So today, the financial resources are distributed in such a way that 70% goes for salary, 7% is, for example, for communal services, and so on. That is all tied up to an old type understanding uh, of uh, uh, order number 33, which had to be cancelled long time ago. How to come out of this situation? So that the uh, manager of the institution having money could use this money for the benefit of the patient. This is uh, where we provide this financial freedom to use uh, the budgetary money so that the manager can use this money not like the state tells him, but so that in every specific case can use this money, for example, to procure additional medicines, uh, to maybe sometimes they will need to reduce the number of beds which very often are empty, and also this salary should be changed. Uh, there should be the minimum of the salary established. Uh, and the Cabinet of Ministers, in accordance with the state budget, till we have the system of insurance medicine, we will have only the state budget. So understanding that, the future manager should understand that uh, he will have freedom, not limitless, uh, how to uh, spend this money. First of all, in the interests of the patient. As to the PPP, we did not discuss this topic, but that is not for today. I would like to declare my understanding of how in the future the PPP should develop and how the private uh, uh, public health care institutions should develop. Unfortunately, the private institutions account for only 4% of the medical institutions in Ukraine, and this sector does not develop at all. And PPP, all the investments which are to come to Ukraine, they should be based on creation of a new, of something new but not on appropriating some old uh, things. Uh, and that is what was happening in all sectors of economy. In the competitive environment, in the future, when the medicine uh, uh, becomes the social part of life of Ukrainian society, then the state cannot leave the patient on his or her own with the commercial medical institution. The state should carry all the social burden uh, because some people uh, cannot afford to get adequate medical assistance. For that, we need commercial, uh, non-commercial, communal institutions where such assistance will be provided to people. Even in the U.S., there are federal hospitals. Of course, the quality of medical service is not as good, than the, but even in the system of public health, which is privatized, they do have the federal hospitals. People who cannot afford to get medical services, uh, uh, such institutions uh, render such services, unlike in Georgia, where they absolutely privatized the, the uh, public health system. Our minister is from Georgia, and everyone believes that we will follow the way the Georgia uh, is going, but that way is not uh, is recognized as not the correct one. 
because all those medical institutions which were privatized in Georgia are now returned to state uh, property or communal property so that 70 or 50 percent of the population could get services as the social service. It is important not to run fast. In the future, of course, we will be ordering services. And the state, uh, that there will be, I hope, there will be no difference in 10 years where to buy the services, uh, whether to buy them from private institution or from private and uh, public partnership institution or in communal institution then only in competitive environment we'll, we'll understand which services are cheaper and which are of what quality. Now this uh, is very small step that we are trying to make because we are not discussing the comprehensive sy uh, system of reforming the public health care. Uh, may I uh, make a statement, an announcement? I will give the floor to Acereta, then uh, Krupi, and then uh, Kerczynska. Two very brief remarks. First, I would like to support what uh, uh, Kundeyev said about the systemic analysis especially when it comes to the economic foundation of all our reforms. Do we calculate which, uh, what will have in the result of every step? Every step should be calculated. We need to understand whether this will be good or bad and how will it uh, affect my pocket. All these risks are usually calculated all over the world, and we can do that. And also whether our society is ready to control the autonomous uh, healthcare institutions. Uh, if we do not have the community which can control the quality of services, then we will get to a dead end again. Kupita. I would like to remind that uh, you can pick up uh, the uh, two packages of document that is draft law of Ukraine on introducing amendments to some pieces of legislation as to improving legislation and the comparative table of all three drafts. It's not about two drafts, it's about three drafts. I would like to remind you of what uh, Madam Bagamolet said. During a week, we expect to get comments to this law, to this comparative table. You can uh, mail that to the following address. Slobodnichenko.m at urimax.ua Please uh, come up to me if you fail to put it down and we will dictate it to you again. After you provide comments, we will organize another meeting of experts. We will invite those who actively provide comments to this meeting. Thank you. Alexander. Um, I believe that, um, well, I will give my uh, opportunity to Victoria Milutin. I am the executive director of Ukrainian uh, German Medical Association. I am the representative of the civil society. I support uh, uh, making institutions autonomous that will allow to set to, to, to 
set doctors free from feudalism and this will allow hospitals to work independently and Mr. Yuri Garbus was talking about patients but I believe that we have not uh, felt ourselves as Ukrainian patients. I would like to address the committee of Verkhovna Rada and the Ministry of Public Health We had this discussion uh, now. There was no understanding. So this way, we are wasting time and the window of opportunity will be closed. And now we are present. We will see how the system of medical care is becoming less effective. So please keep in mind uh, uh, this question. When will you start the reform? We discussed it, uh, Victoria. Uh, you invited the members of European Parliament in Odessa, and not a single member of the committee invited, uh, received the invitation to participate. That was very important. That's the lack of communication. We were saying now there is a platform. The platform is open. We, the members of the committee, we do not care who submits the draft law. If it is important that this is the Cabinet of Ministers, I'm for that. The main thing is to get a good result. There is a platform. Get united. Uh, submit your proposals. Uh, and there is the global experience of those people who came to you to Odessa, to your forum. So please join us in our work. Send your proposals. so that we do not argue about uh, who is the author of the law. Uh, let us look at that uh, situation uh, as the opportunity for the reform to be launched. Sergei Kozin, I am an expert on PPP. I would like to mention the following. making institutions autonomous could be done with the assistance of the law 1058 which provides for transferring into management to private companies uh, the objects uh, which are social objects uh, and now This norm, uh, we, the, there is a proposal that this norm includes the medical care institutions. Now, if any local authority is authorized to transfer this communal um, institution into something else, but we see that local authorities uh, can do whatever they want with the property because they are not under the control of the community. I believe that this should be the mandatory discussion with the community when uh, uh, the medical institutions are transferred to another form of ownership. Uh, well, uh, the autonomy is the right. You know that any new right is always accompanied by duties and responsibilities. And what will this autonomy give to the civil society? There's no secret that only 7% goes 
for communal services, 9% are direct uh, expenses for treating a person. Everything else is indirect expenditures. If the organization has the right to flexibly manage the funds, uh, then based on the agreements, they will have a duty to provide a certain volume of medical services to the following categories of population which are protected in accordance with what is guaranteed by the constitutional laws. And that duty will balance all these other rights. Thank you. Our duties are always related to where do we get money from. Our constitution provides for uh, the medical assistance provided uh, free of charge, uh, but this doesn't happen in reality. So in fact, in the shadow, in the gray zone, we have about 60% of money additional. And to legalize this money, we need to change uh, the system of public health. Making institutions autonomous provides for additional responsibility. If just the law is passed, we will not resolve the problem. But we need the bylaws which will be, uh, which the cabinet of ministers will have to approve, uh, to, to adopt. Then many other documents are to be developed by the Ministry of Public Health. And because it's on, you're talking about uh, local authorities, then we need the resolutions of the local councils and other local authorities and municipal authorities to say that the law will be adopted uh, before the new year. And in the new year, we will have all the medical institutions autonomous. This will be wrong. This will be just the opportunity for launching this procedure. And uh, we will be uh, creating the condition so that it's uh, mm, profitable, becomes profitable. So this is uh, quite a disputable issue. Unfortunately, we will not be able to create the new system of uh, public health uh, uh, just approving one law. I will immediately respond to your statement. We should not focus exclusively on this uh, draft laws. We should keep in uh, the field of our revision all the um, uh, spectrum of uh, the reform. When people mention the PPP and the possibilities, uh, that's uh, good. The law uh, on PPP, which is now being passed, it's uh, uh, the reframework law, while the European PPP's legislation is uh, uh, much more developed. Uh, and uh, um, actually, there are lots of options which each country uh, chooses. Uh, today, our big risks are related not just to the absolute risk, it is related to the situational risk. Uh, we have a disorder in our judiciary system, in our court system. If we um, add another risks in the health care, then the process uh, will uh, go beyond the control. and. Uh, Today we discussed what is needed. We all agreed how this uh, uh, should be done. And nevertheless, I believe we should focus our attention at the general vision of the reforming direction. We have 10 minutes. 
uh, by the end of the mm -hmm, uh, of discussion, uh, I would like to understand what is the uh, uniform summary of today's discussion. So the ministry's uh, um, uh, uh, draft law remains in the parliament. You won't revoke your. Um, what 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 will happen? I do not understand. Everything will depend on uh, when both draft laws will be put to the parliamentary agenda. In line with the regu in line with regulation, both main law and uh, main draft law and alternative draft law should be reviewed at the same time. And uh, um, from tomorrow, the um, uh, reconciliation committee will start its work, and uh, uh, they will decide. Uh, um, uh, when they, they uh, both draft laws will be bring to the agenda. This might happen on Tuesday or on Thursday. The second, after um, plenary meeting of the Verkhovna Rada, another two weeks will be devoted to the work in uh, mm, Okay, uh, constituencies. in constituencies and then at the end of October after elections we will come back to these draft laws so if these draft laws are included to the agenda and if we if it comes to the review uh, then it might have that uh, uh, the alternative uh, law will be repealed and uh, the um, governmental will be sent for uh, amending uh, with 220 voices. Then on the same day, I re repeal my uh, draft, uh, my draft law. And on the same day, we uh, put on the table our new draft law, which you have in your handouts. Uh, by that moment, I hope it will be coordinated with the Ministry of Healthcare. Uh, so, because the uh, legislative department uh, mentioned about risks, then the uh, the minister mentioned that they are ready to remove all the um, problems. So the committee wishes to uh, insist in putting this draft law into agenda. Today we had the Reconciliation Council, which uh, forms the agenda. Uh, the head of the committee, chairman of the committee, chairperson of the committee was present at this council meeting. I do not know whether whether they pu have put it in the law into agenda. So at, now at the website of uh, Verkhovna Rada, you can see when both these versions will be discussed. So uh, we plan to uh, revoke our um, previous draft law and uh, instead of it substitute it with our improved draft law. And uh, we are ready to gather as a committee and to vote for this uh, new law in the first reading. And uh, this will open a possibility for the procedure. Hmm. Of course, I cannot uh, uh, make decision instead of Verkhovna Rada and the committee. I cannot predict how the Verkhovna Rada will vote. Maybe, maybe Verkhovna Rada may decide that all the um, versions uh, of the laws are good and uh, vote 
for specific version. We need 226 votes for anything under the cupola of Verkhovna Rada. There is one more uh, option which we had with the uh, international procurement. We revoked all the three draft laws and uh, the alternative draft law was recognized by all the stakeholders as the basic draft law. So we can revoke all the draft laws and uh, um, take one reconciliation uh, uh, version. Uh, Mr. Shimkin was a moderator during that sitting. All the three draft laws were entered by MPs, uh, while for uh, withdrawal of the uh, cabinet law, you, you need the specific procedure. So you do not have any unified uh, uh, position of the committee. We uh, repeal, uh, repealed the uh, cabinet draft law, and uh, we wish to uh, improve the uh, MPs draft law. Everybody is interested to know when. You are the authorities. Basically, I will insist, I would like that uh, to be considered tomorrow or discussed tomorrow or Thursday. And as a member of the committee, I would like this procedure to be launched as soon as possible. One thing we would like to hear a feedback from the Ministry of Public Health on the draft which was disseminated today. Maybe the ministry will say that's nonsense and we disagree. There should be a written uh, decision, resolution and written, uh, written recommendation from the ministry. For that, we need several days. We need written confirmation of the National Council on Reforms or reanimation package of reforms the organization that will analyze this version. That's not the final product, that's the version. Maybe they will add something there. For that, you have email. Uh, during the week, you can send your proposals there. Uh, we are uh, finishing the round table. Everyone said what you wanted. Thank you. That was a great discussion that explains why we don't have this reform. We hope that this week uh, the parliament will make some uh, decision.